antenna removal Queensland just wanted to show you something they turn around and they poison all these plants and make out that it's a good option and yet you look under every single one of those clumps of, tr of plants that you can see of lantana look at all the scotch thistle and weeds underneath those plants they don't exist anywhere else across that surface of those grounds but look at them under each and every one of those those poison plants just goes to show how much the um, what's names come back and weeds propagate underneath those things but there's a lot of places they haven't poisoned it properly and it's still growing but it's still in situ you know it's still causing problems but yeah it's a it just propagates other weeds by poisoning them I'm Gary I'm the attitude adjuster and uh, Lantana Removal Queensland is our business so you know you look at these areas this is national parks and you look back down through there and I know I've showed you a lot of this already today this is about 10 k south of where I showed you on that other bitumen road and this is the other other area all the way down through there as far as you can see to the creek and then up the hillside behind but you know does the lantana come into the property from here or does it come out of the property from here you know it's been poisoned at one stage but it's not been very successfully poisoned but you look at it all through these areas you know and these people lease these lands off the national parks trying to make a living and this is what they have to put up with you know so which way did this lantana move did it move up through that surface because I don't know whether you can see way up in those hillsides over the back there that's all lantana up through those hillsides up through the tops of the hill up there and up through this this surface up the back here across the road on the other side of the road and this is where Somerset Council says that we don't clear it we don't deal with it when it's on dirt roads well you know there's nowhere in the legislation that says that that's true it's a lie you know you look at it through here it's swallowed up that fence down in underneath i don't know whether you can see that timber fence all the way back under there and it's swallowed all that up but all of it through here growing on the outside of the fence because the fence steps back there it's growing on the outside of the fence through here and they're not bothering to do anything with it they just pretend it isn't here and the infestations just continue so you know whether it's a waterboard infestation or it's a national parks infestation it's all being released to the environment it doesn't matter whether you say it's the environment down there the birds are picking it up when it seeds and then flying it to new locations up on the tops of hills now that's bloody steep country up the top up there and it's down the whole surface up there it's stealing all that good grazing land and destroying the grasses and and creating erosion where it's sitting it's a load of rubbish it's an absolute lie to say that this material is any good for uh, erosion control it's absolute lie because it suppresses the grass then when it's removed there's no grass there and there won't be any grass there for a considerable amount of time so the erosion sets in you end up with a hole you end up with a divot you end up with more problems on the outside of the fence here look at this side of this stuff here you can't get access to the Telstra stuff you can't get access to the power stuff properly and they say oh no we're not responsible for where it's on a dirt road it's an absolute lie there is nowhere in the biosecurity act that it says that they can leave it wherever they choose to and they can pick and choose what they deal with they must start to be held accountable for these um, actions for these things you know it's just um, until we start to take an interest and then start to restore our environment so the grasses come back and stabilize the soil loss there's huge erosion losses through all of these areas because these plants are sitting here and there's no grass on those surfaces and there's no cattle um, looking after those grasses and helping them to prosper all of this just gets worse and worse and worse as time goes on and it goes straight up the mountainside over there and then continues on for 8 to 10 k's to the north look at it up there up around that corner on the outside of the fence and the poor farmer next door battles and battles and battles to try and keep his property you know um, under control with all these noxious and toxic weeds 
there's nothing have a look underneath that stuff that's what makes me mad about the lies that we're told any animal foraging under there or going under there for any reason will have disturbed that leaf litter and there is nothing disturbed underneath these plants and I see that for the last 40 years nothing at all has even run through there to go to somewhere else or to take refuge under there not one leaf not one track of dirt is moved underneath that material not anything and they tell you that something uses this material for cover and to hide what a load of rubbish I don't see birds in it even if there was a bird pulled up well I don't see them never have and never seen a flock of birds fly out of this stuff even when it's seeding water is what moves this material and it moves it extremely well as you can see here the higher it gets up that high country it just floods back down out of it so until they actually deal with those things nothing will ever change thank you for very much for stopping in but boy these national parks and these councils seq water they all need to uh get serious about eradicating this material it's just terrible anyway i'm gary 0449 986 880 lantana removal queensland on facebook and on .com.au thanks for that drop by again soon see you on the next one so this is um, national parks on both sides of this road here and all of that footpath area outside of the fence line which you can just see a fence line there is all um, is all uh, council land they're supposed to be responsible for this but they tell the um, rate payers of the district that um, they're not they don't have to clean up land tanner on dirt roads and there's absolutely nowhere that that actually shows up and these things are absolutely disgraceful but which side of the road infested which side that's a question you've got to ask yourself look at it way up on the hillside up there all the way right up on the hillside all the way across there And then you look at Jolie's side there and, all, and inside of that road on the other side. So how's this material not being released to the environment? On what, what means are they suppressing this from releasing to the environment? This is a watercourse. This runs down through this whole valley of this, this watercourse running down through here. Look at it go back into the bush back there all the way. It just continues as far as the eye can see for 8 to 10 kilometres north. All through here. It's amazing to see exactly how bad these things are. And how much corruption has gone on with these councils in these areas. They collect the rates for it and they don't do any of the work at all. you look at how steep that surface is there that's the type of stuff that we work on and we clean all the lantana off there and we leave the leaf litter sit, still sitting on the on the hillside look at it all down through that area down there and look at the scotch thistle from all the poisoning it's one of the things that really seems to show up a lot when they poison heavily around areas But it's very disturbing when you see just how bad the watercourses are choked with it all along that fence line 
and all through this watercourse. All of this tobacco and other vines, weeds, lantana. Just terrible. And they're just not accountable. This is a watercourse. And look at how full of the lantana it actually is. Unbelievable. That's the side of the road is all of that lantana there. It's outside of the fence line that the council says they don't have to clean up. <coughs> Look underneath the lantana there. You can see with the leaf litter, nothing has disturbed any of this material forever. No, bring the car. Bring the car. Is it? Talented man like you, I would have no problems believing you could. Nothing. Nothing's been through there and underneath those bushes bothering to do anything under the bushes. <coughs> so it just continues on one side of the road straight through to the other and continues north and south for hundreds of kilometres <clears throat> and nobody says a word about this look at it here not that this is any different than anywhere else and look at the leaf litter see that's the biggest telltale when you look at stuff like that you can see nothing's disturbed any of that leaf litter <clears throat> No bird's nests, no nothing. Just up there anyway. So long as you stay close to the edge of the road, you're right. And the buffer they cut and then it just goes back up into the hill all the way north. Look at it over here. Just obscene what ratepayers have to put up with, with what they pay in taxes and pay. And this, this sea of this material just goes on and on and on, but nobody sees it. People don't get to see this stuff, see the levels of the infestations. You haven't got any problems with that, that'll, you know, like as long as you don't spin the tyres, this sort of material is fine. See the, the snake track? Yeah. He looks like a decent sized snake. I don't want to find him. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. He just goes on. This is what Australia looks like. Trees fall down across roads. And that's what happens. They just get chopped up to the minimum they can to get access and then that's where they're left until something else happens. And you look at how many of these dead trees are standing here. I would be putting those suckers down before somebody wears it like this one would have. Look at it down through the ham. All the dead material. Nothing's disturbing the leaf litter in all those areas. 
There's nothing lives under forages under this material. So therefore nothing goes in there after it chasing that material. It just keeps on going and going and going, you know. Nothing uses this area. It all gets moved off it. Can't use the water resources because half of them can't get down to those areas. Get it up through there. You know when um, when Mr. Scott Morrison has a look at these videos, you know I hope he understands that I'm not the enemy. That I really don't dislike um, him or or the people involved in a lot of the politics. But when you see what I see daily, and you ask you know premiers and prime ministers to have a look. And just see exactly what this looks like and exactly how many lies that we are told and then they go and um, put that information up and they get given more money to write books and they haven't got a clue they are absolutely clueless as to the dealing with the lantana you know something's happened here where somebody's have a, had a hack at this material <clears throat> i don't know why it's no different than any other piece of lantana they haven't done it on the other side of the road um you know it's very strange that they've you know th they've done the same there with those pieces there but, but yeah it um it's heartbreaking when you actually see this stuff that's why i've tried to bring it to your attention and why i got so frustrated and upset when you're not um responding to those things but when you actually see the levels of these materials in places and and what it is doing to our environment it is so heartbreaking and so so just devastating look at all that material up through there it is just incredible how bad all that stuff is and it's just exactly the mirror image of the other side of the road and it's supposed to be waterboard in some sections of this road and uh, national parks in other sections of the road so i can't tell you which one's which but that's identical to the national park stuff that's 10 k's to the north of here and it's exactly the same it just continues exact it's like somebody painted a picture and then put it down here you know you judge our ecology by the quality of our water courses and our water systems and you see this stuff here that should never have been allowed to grow on the sides of creeks and roads because it gets so much water and in another month's time this stuff will be absolutely in bloom and flushing a whole new run of um, seeds all the way down the watercourses again starting the whole lot over and suppressing all of our native forests sitting at the end of a watercourse look the water runs down the drainage down the road down the ditch down into the spoon drain and feeds these guys right on the top of it beautiful job they couldn't have been put in a better spot and they couldn't be have the plumbing run right to their doorstep um, for a happier environment for these guys to flourish and to um, propagate even worse <clears throat> Well, that's what you're looking at, Mr. Morrison. You know, I appreciate you having a chat to the councils, but we need to get public opinion on board to understand why this stuff is so devastating to our ecology. Same sort of place, sitting on the edge of the road, getting fed tons and tons of water, and then propagating back up in through there beautifully. And these people are leasing this land off the national parks to try and earn a living off and this is what they're having to deal with why would they have done that i would think that's higher but you look at the level of the lantana there and the spoon drain runs off the side there to the low point there it can't run uphill like whoever dug that right wants to that's just incredible that's the lowest point so all the water's going to sit right there 
and it's going to feed all of these lantana plants all in this section here and flourish them like mad which they they don't need any flourishing look at that that's like 60 feet across to the creek now that's how wide that material is fanned out and that's what we face that's what we face in Australia The council's quite honestly, but look under there when you look back and you see normally this is winter so or just the end of winter. Nothing's been under there in any shape or form in any direction as far as I can see back through under there. Not any of that leaf litter has been disturbed. There are no birds sitting in this material. There are no nests. And as far back as you can see that's, that's just lantana waiting for the rains to come in the in the creek system in the watercourse system this is all a watercourse this whole thing back to that um, steep cliff face is a watercourse so this sucker look at this tree you should be putting that sucker on the ground before it lands on somebody's head but then there's a heap of them on both sides of the road but look at that just as far as you can see back under there and nothing's been paddling around under it all of the Australian ecology, all of the Australian fauna has been, you know, moved out of these areas. Terrible. There's a fire break goes up through there just to separate the lantana from one section to another section. And these people have nothing, no money to deal with this stuff. They can't deal with it. It's just on too large a scale. Yet we have the means to manage it and deal with it, you know, and take back our Australian ecology. We can't turn our backs on this sort of stuff. This is Australia-wide. Well, eastern coast-wide goes all the way back up the top up there. <clears throat> and we're still falling as the creek winds its way around and back down to a low spot down here to cross the road again. Nothing through those areas. Just more and more of the same. Heartbreaking. Hello everybody, I'm Gary. I'm the uh, Lantana expert. Lantana Removal Queensland .com .au. Lantana Removal Queensland on Facebook. Also 0449 986 880. We're just having a little bit of a walk around out here at Dundas. Um, just having a look at what the councils don't do. Just having a look here. All in flower, all ready to start getting ready to go to seed. And that's look at the size of the wild tobacco bushes down the back there. All the way down to the watercourse. And all the way down along both sides of the road. And that's what it looks like out in my world. And like I've shown so many times, look at the leaf litter. The leaf litter shows you if anything has ever tracked through that material. And as far back there as you can see, for the whole way along the road, there's nothing's been through that material. <coughs> just go down. Anyway, no, just go down there, I'll catch up to you. You look all down through there. Not any leaf litter in any part of that has been disturbed. <clears throat> so it shows you all of the native species have long since gone. Look at it all along the sides of this high side of this bank where the council's only hit it with the uh, blade of the um, of the grader as they're going through. All the way down there, nothing's been disturbed or bothered. It's just all exactly the same. Fences are down, you know, how does anybody make any living out of this stuff with the national parks and with the councils and this sort of conduct? And this is my world, Mr. Morrison. 
Prime Minister. This is why I keep writing and why I keep trying to bring it to your attention of what's happening in our, our world out here. And it's shocking. It is absolutely shocking to see our wildlife removed from these terrains where they would have inhabited. And National Parks is supposed to be a... Look at it go up the back, up the steep cliff face up the back into the um, National Parks. <clears throat> and yet their system has, has been doing the same thing all the time. They've never ever done anything different. They burn our forest, forestry out, it gets weaker, kills all the animals because they have to backburn to the main fire. It kills all the animals. All the fencing is down and laying everywhere. And look at it up through there, nothing's been through that area. All through the watercourses, you know, you cannot allow this material to grow on the sides of watercourses. It's illegal to release this material to the environment. And yet you look at the levels of this infestation. 10 k's to the north of here, exactly the same as what it is here and 100 kilometres north of that still exactly the same as it is here and I'm the bad guy for bringing it to people's attention I'm the criminal but what else can you do you can't keep pretending look at look under the material there nothing has been through there nothing lives in there nothing 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 no birds nests no birds no nothing. If they come down and eat the seeds, they'll die exactly the same as the cattle and everything else do eventually. Their liver will fail and they die. But in the meantime, they fly these seeds uphill against gravity and drop them up the top of the hill. And then what happens is all this material floods, ba floods back down 10 times faster. That's how we got to where we are now. And why I say, in the very near future, we are gonna quadruple this material in the next 10 years under the Department of uh, Primary Industries, the DAF and Biosecurity, and the uh, Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy. We will quadruple it in the next 10 years under their management. Look at this stuff here. That's a watercourse, that's actually a creek. What lives in there? What lives up that side? Hey? It's just a complete wall of lantana all the way through there. <clears throat> you know, if they have to burn out areas 